what's up everyone? You probably know me from real terms for AI, but I want to show you some of the things that I do during my actual day job. So if you don't know, I'm a tech lead for our cloud developer relations time here at Google Cloud. What that ultimately means is I get to spend a lot of time playing with tech and then helping developers actually build things with Google Cloud, not just in AI, but across other things like event-driven architecture, you know, data, apps, CIC, and all that fun stuff for it. So let me show you one of the things that I actually built here for Google Cloud Next, which is pretty cool. And I'll even tell you some of the things that I could have done better because I think that's just as important. What we see here is a map and it looks like a map of a lake, right? This is actually Lake Washington in Seattle, Lake Washington in Seattle, Washington. Fun tongue twister for you. What we have here is nine locations that we built and what we could do is use this for something like a destination planner where we wanna say, hey, I wanna actually kayak from where the kayak starts to one of these areas. Now you may be wondering, what is a physical demo doing at something where we actually talk about application development? Well here, what we're doing is we're actually taking some of the concepts that we learn from the real world using things like Gemini and even you know, using event-driven architecture with PubSub to bring these things to life and make it actionable for developers in that. So let's go ahead and see how this thing works. What we're gonna do is we're gonna shift over here to our console. We're gonna go ahead and start our adventure. Now we have a number of different locations here and we can see that we have some pre-canned prompts that we could use. I'll go ahead and type one in here just so we can see uh, some of the fun things in action. Uh, you know, we work with a lot of different uh, customers here, including uh, folks from overseas. So maybe I want to you know, see American football because, hey, why not, right? We're, uh, we're here in America. So I'll go ahead and uh, pull this up. And what's actually happening behind the scenes is we take our prompt. We have a prompt template, if you remember from our first season. And then we're going to essentially take that prompt, inject what we have, and then from the list of nine locations on the board, figure out which one should we go to. Here we have the University of Washington Husky Stadium, uh, which is actually pretty close. So we'll go ahead and select, yes, let's go. And then we're gonna actually start moving the map. And we have some things here just in, in kind of real language, you know, what is, what is all of our code actually doing? So let's go ahead and shift over because the fun part's about to begin. Here we can actually see that the kayak is really moving. How does that happen? We'll talk about that in a second. But we're gonna get here, we're gonna get to Husky Stadium, and when we get there, we should get a little light that lights up that says that we can actually go there. We're going, we're going, we're going, we're going. It's a kayak, so it actually, it does take a long time to get there. I promise this is, this is probably a two hour kayak ride for it. But look, we have a light that pops up. So let's talk about how this is actually built with code and, and architecture for it. On the, the cloud side, so we have a three-tier web app. We have a front end that's running with a Vite and Node.js. We have a back end that's running in Python that and both are hosted on Cloud Run as our service engine. Once we get the request for the location that we're going to go to, we then take that and we put a message onto PubSub and we use what's called an event-driven architecture. The event-driven architecture publishes the message and then we pull that message down to a Raspberry Pi, which actually sits here uh, below all this stuff. So the Pi has what we built as a Python-based agent. That agent will essentially do three things. First, it will say what's the location and in its own dictionary map of, of routes and traces, where does the kayak need to go? Based on that, the kayak will then send a message to an Arduino controller, which then powers a set of rails and motors that we have sitting behind this assembly. Now we also have a little magnet piece here. You can see I could actually pop this kayak off and put it back on. And what happens is the rails will then move and the kayak will move to our location that we've mapped. But that's not all, right? Because if we're developers, we should probably keep adding things until it breaks. What we also did was added a controller from Fidgets to be able to control these different light assemblies and things on it. So when this actually gets there, then we say, hey, we've arrived, power light for this. It's pretty cool, right? Let me tell you about some of the things now that I wish I had known, um, and we'll probably do these better for next year. First, if you notice, I could have done a better job in my code actually saying, hey, the kayak is moving. We should have some sort of synchronous process to be able to then say finished only when the kayak has moved. Something I learned and something I will definitely do in the future. Another thing is that translating software and hardware is actually very difficult. In this case, we're using a, a motor with a stepper but what we needed to do is also add a brake to that, which means we had to change out the entire motor assembly. 
So while we're using a basic controller for this, I'd probably use something like CAN bus for those out there who love these different hardware things in the future. And last, if you think about these different things, there's a lot more we could do with Gemini and even using our AI. But in this case, this is just very easy for us to see AI and then actually use AI to judge or critique our responses. So if we see here where we say a University of Washington Husky Stadium, let's say this didn't come back, we could then use a Gemini prompt to essentially say, that's not correct. Here's the nine destinations that we have and then try again and then give that information back to the prompt is kind of a rater and then get that actual response back over a set of turns. So I hope this is super cool for you to see some of the things that I actually do and can't wait for you to see some of the different comments that we have, including the GitHub link with this code, which I promise I could probably do better, but you know, time is what it is and we'll get it cleaned up for you. So this is Jason, happy prompting, but also happy application development.